Okay, today we're going to have some fun and I'm going to show you what one watt of power per channel sounds like with a pair of loudspeakers which are 87 and a half dB efficiency at one watt. So how are we going to do this? Because it's quite complicated. Connected to the right speaker, we've got a voltmeter. So because it's seven and a half ohms, nominal impedance, when that gets to 2.75 volts, basically we're running at one watt. Now, over here, sitting in my chair where I normally sit, we've got Henry, my trusty old decibel meter, which I've set at a 90 dB range. And this is going to show us how loud that is in terms of decibels. And we've got a nice camera set up here. And then above Henry, we've got a pair of ears, microphones, just like my ears, picking up this sound in the room. Now I'm mic'd up with a lavia mic so you can get a nice uh, sound now, but we're gonna switch over to Henry's ears during the video to really get a realistic view of just how loud that is. So I think we're ready to go, chaps. We're just gonna play that through the, the Quad Arteria stereo player. Oh, I've chosen for this the um, Vivaldi Storm from the Four Seasons, Summer, the big storm that comes, because it's a lot of violins and cellos and it's a very consistent volume. Basically, it's flat out. And this gives us a chance to really have some fun with this uh, setup. Okay, so if you guys are ready, I'm ready. Should we give it a go? Okay, let's begin. Imagine you've just come home from work and you've had a really stressful day and you've decided you're going to blast the house out with music. Let's just start with it nice and quiet, our little Vivaldi storm. Okay. Let's start turning it up. And we'll go up, we'll go up. This is very, very quiet. The neighbours are not going to get upset. No one's getting upset. But we're going to go, oh, 34. Let's just go a bit higher and a bit higher. enjoyed that demo. Thank you very much indeed for listening. Okay, so what can we conclude from this? At the highest point, when it was as loudest that we went, we see brief moments where it goes to about 7 volts, 7.17 volts, which means we're actually 
using 6.8 watts per channel at that point. So nowhere do we get above seven watts, even at the very loudest peak. You will also have noticed, and we'll show some close-ups of this, that the cone is moving in and out rather a lot at some points, although we don't seem to hear any difference in the sound. Now, it's quite likely that during the recording or in post-production, something was ha happening or something was added, maybe in the very low frequencies, which are maybe even subsonic. Who knows? And it's an effect that you get sometimes from vinyl. If you're playing a vinyl piece of vinyl and it's slightly warped, you will see these cones moving. And when that's happening, the amplifier has to deliver a lot of power. And we will see that, that when we were using the 6.8 watts, it was at those moments when that cone was moving, but audibly, we didn't really hear any difference. And the other thing you will notice when you're looking at the, the voltmeter, it's flying all over the place. One second is it very high, sometimes very low. It's slightly behind the soundtrack in a way because of the fact that the it's a digital meter and it's, it takes a while to respond. So it's not really moving in absolute real time. But as you can see that the, the voltage is going up and then down dramatically because we're listening to music. If we were listening to an electronic tone like a sine wave, then okay, it would be just a, a pure moving of, of the meter. So that really explains it. But what can we conclude from this when buying a hi-fi system or choosing components? The conclusion is this. If you want to buy an 8 watt per channel valve amplifier, we have just proved that <laughs> this amplifier, 8 watts, is enough to drive the Sibelius loudspeakers to over 100 decibels in a very well dampened room. If we took all the dampening out of this room, took the bass bins out, took the panels out, it would be much louder because the sounds will be bouncing off and hitting each other and exploding in the room. What we've done here is we've changed the acoustics of this room to very similar to what you would have in a mixing studio, i.e. very little echo, and that absorbs a lot of energy and a lot of sound. So even in a very heavily damp room like this one is, an eight watt per channel amp will take the volume level in the room way higher than your neighbors would want and is safe for your ears. I mean, going over 90 decibels for a long period of time is definitely not advised. And over 100 decibels, at one point you saw the needle flick right over. Well, you know, that is very loud. 105 is the theoretical max of these speakers, but they run nicely under 96 on a continual basis. 90 is very, very nice. But that's, as you see in this video, extraordinarily loud. So why would you go for a 600 watt amplifier? That seems crazy because eight is enough. Well, it's not the amount of watts that's important. It's how fast the amplifier can deliver the maximum power required. So if the speaker's saying, please give me 6.85 watts, how fast can the amplifier respond? If the drummer hits the skin with his stick, or the pianist whacks the piano and our speakers have got to respond, the speaker's not a problem. They will respond extraordinarily fast. But the amplifier's got to suddenly find the energy. It's a bit like in those days when the, you had the digital cameras and you used to push the button and a little half a second later it used to go click or even a second later and it was very annoying. So that's the same thing with the amplifier. We push the button, how long does it need to produce that smash. And to get a single drive cone loudspeaker, or in fact any loudspeaker, but especially ours, really under control, you want a high quality amp that can really respond very, very fast indeed, so we can get back to where it needs to be for the next uh, voltage amplification, or the next frequency, or the next note to be played. And the faster it can do it, and the higher its damping factor, meaning how well it's able to resist the voltage coming back from the loudspeaker back into itself, is the better it will control the speaker and the better the sound. So don't worry about the, the amount of watts, 
be more concerned about its ability, the amplifier's ability, to handle these dynamics. And after all, it's all about fun, enjoyment, and listening to music, and just taking yourself to wherever the music wants to take you.